Let's continue section um, three, two with an example. So we're gonna go back to those weird location formulas that we just saw in the previous video to find percentiles and quartiles. So we are looking at 13 real estate prices and they're in thousands of dollars. So 114 really means 114,000 or 114,000, which makes more sense for real estate prices. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the 67th percentile in part A. It means 67% of the houses are less, which we'll interpret in a second. So step one is to find the location. So the formulas we went over are location. So location will be the percent out of 100. So 67 out of 100. Looking at this one. Times the sample size plus one. So N would be 13 here. So 13 plus one. So if you're using your calculator, you're gonna do 13 plus one first because of the parentheses. And you get 14. And then just do 67 over 100 times 14, which is 9.38. So it's a decimal. So it's not a whole number. So it's not the ninth item. What this tells me is it's in between the ninth and tenth. Anytime we get something not a whole number, it'll be in between the one before, which is ninth, and the one after, which is tenth. So then we go to the list and find the value. That's step two. So the data is already in order, so that's good. And we just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So that's what I mean by location. It's the ninth one on the list and the 10th one on the list. So we're gonna go ahead and average those out. So I'm gonna do 575 plus 639 and divide by two. So that's what I meant when I said um, if the location is not a whole number, we will use the average of the data values in the location before and after. So 9 and 10 would be before and after 9.38. And now we're just approximating, and that's okay. So we're dividing by 2 because there's two numbers. I get 1214 over 2, and I get 607. And that is my 67th percentile. So what the heck does this mean? So based on the sample, I would expect that about 67%, because that was the percentile, of all houses in this area cost, and then this would be less than or more than, percentiles are less than, and then $607,000. And that's how you find a percentile. So step one is location, step two is the value. And so we'll repeat that when we find the median and the quartiles. So we're gonna repeat that with the median and quartiles. So I am going to bring the list down so we can see it on the video. Just squeeze it in over here. So we're gonna do the same idea. So I'm just gonna go in order. So first we're gonna find the locations. So the location of Q1, the location of the median, and the location of Q3. And then we'll find the values of each of these. So Q1, and we're gonna take the same formula from above, but we're just gonna change the percent part. So Q1, remember, was 1 fourth for 25%, and then it's 13 plus one. So if you found parentheses on your calculator, that's an option. Otherwise, 13 plus 1 is 14, and then times that by 1 fourth, and we get 3.5. So that means we're going to go to the third and the fourth, since it's not a whole number. So let's do this 
So we're going to go one, two, three, four. Oops, I did not do that. Four. So to find Q1, I'm going to go ahead and add those two numbers. So step one was to find the location, two is finding the values. So the formula only tells us where on the list. So 230 plus 387 over 2. So it's the average, right? We're dividing by 2 because we're averaging two numbers. And I got 308.5. Cool. Let's try the median. So then the median was 50%. So same formula with 1 half. 13 plus 1. And I think we'll get 7. 14 divided by 2. And since we got a whole number, it's just the seventh item makes it easier. So three, four, five, six, seven. So we don't have to do any averaging. It just is the seventh item. So the median is just 489. So when you get a whole number, it makes it a lot easier. And then Q3, same idea, three fourths for 75%. I get 3 fourths times 14, and I get 10.5. So we'll do the 10th and the 11th on this one. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we're going to average 639 and 659 and divide by 2. Um, I think I got 649 on this one. So those are my quartiles. And then the final thing we're going to do is make a five number summary, which is important because it creates, it's going to create a box plot in a second. So the five number summary is the min, Q1, median, Q3, and max. So the min stands for minimum value. So the min is just 114. Q1, we just found 308.5, median 489, Q3 is 649, and then the max is just the largest, so 1200. And that's our five number summary. And why do we want this summary? We will see when we make a box plot. So we will finish up this video with a box plot. So box plots, I think, are easiest just to kind of watch and see how they work. So a box plot only has a horizontal number line. So we're going to label the bottom with the house prices. Um, I think if you count, so to find the scale, right, we have to count boxes. I think I have 20 boxes, and the largest value is 1,200. So for scale, we're going to do 1,200 over 20 which I get 60, and I think 60 seems okay to count by. So go ahead and label the bottom. Six, just keep adding 60. So 120, and then 180, 240, 300, 360. I'm going to label it. If you need more time, pause the video while you label it. Plus 60, plus 60. Um, let's see what is it? I'm labeling it sideways because I feel like it just fits the space a little better. You could also end up counting by 100s if you didn't really care for 60s. You can round up, but you can't round down. So you don't want to go down to 50, because um, 1,200 won't end up fitting. Try it, and it won't work. But you can round up to 100 if you feel like that's nicer to count by. So we only label the horizontal, no vertical scale, which it makes life a little easier. And what we're going to do is we're just going to mark the five number summary. So I'm just going to mark each of those numbers and then show you a box plot. So 114 is around here. Just kind of mark it. You'll see a box plot in a second. 308 would be around there. 
489 would be a little bit more than 480. 649, a little under 660. And then 1200 is way out here. So I just marked the five number summary. One, I marked each of these. They're gonna create this thing called a box plot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put a box around the middle three numbers. So make it a little bit bigger. So Q1, median, and Q3 make a box. Um, so just, it doesn't matter how big it is, you just want it to be big enough to visually see kind of near the center of your graph. And then we're just gonna draw little tails or whiskers that go out to the min and the max. And that's a box plot. So this is probably a new graph for most of us. We'll talk about how to interpret this a little bit better later, but we're just practicing drawing it. Make sure you're labeling in words on the bottom. We want someone to look at this and know what it represents. So we'll see some more box plots later in this section.